Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's dig into the world of layers in Affinity Photo. This subject can be tricky, especially if you're new to Affinity. We will first have a look how the layer stack works and then focus on using layer groups. In a follow-up video, I will then go into detail of child and clipping layers. So, let's use this composition and start with the layer stack shown in the layers panel. The layer stack always starts from the bottom and every layer is blended on top of the previous layer. Let me disable all the layers and show you what I mean. Let's start from the bottom layer. This is a simple grey fill layer. Next, we have a pixel layer which contains this portrait image. As this covers the whole canvas and does not contain any transparency, it replaces the previous layer below. This is also where blend modes come into place. This layer was in normal blend mode, which, as mentioned, just replaces the layer below. But if you change the blend mode, you can specify how it should be blended with the previous layer. As I change the blend mode, you see what happens. Instead of replacing the layer below, it blends in based on the selected blend mode. Next, I have a rectangle layer with a gradient fill. You can always option click on the icon of a layer to see the contents of the clicked layer. Again, this layer will replace the pixels below it, but only the pixels which are not transparent so it will replace only the visible area of this rectangle below. It also has some semi-transparent areas, and those will be blended based on the transparency value, which is also known as the alpha value. Let's have a look at the next two text layers. Just like with the rectangle, these two layers will only replace the areas where text is shown. If we move up, we get an invert adjustment layer. Usually, an adjustment layer applies to everything below itself. So, in this case, the image, the rectangle and the two text layers will be inverted. Then, we got a levels adjustment on top of the inverted canvas, followed by a black and white, and finally, a gradient map adjustment, which makes everything look like gold. The order how the layers are processed is quite important. If I move the invert adjustment two positions to the top, you will see how things go wrong. A quick tip, you can use the command bracket keys to move a layer. So let me use this shortcut to move it back. So, let's summarize. Layers are always blended in from the bottom up and they're always blended based on their alpha values meaning transparent pixels are not blended in. Now that we covered the basics, let's have a look at grouping layers. Grouping layers are used for two main purposes. One, to keep things organized, and two, to contain the blending of layers. Like adjustments only apply to specific layers. To group layers, we select the layers we want to group and then use the layer group menu or the keyboard shortcut command G. To select multiple layers, you can command click to add or remove layers to your selection. You can also select multiple layers by holding the shift key and clicking on another layer. This will select everything between the two selected layers. For the iPad users, you can select multiple layers by swiping to the left on a layer in the layers panel and for a continuous selection, you can one finger tap the first layer and then two finger tap the last one. Now that I have selected my layers, I will press the command G shortcut to make a group of them. Now that I have grouped my layers, I can easily turn the group on and off to hide all the layers inside it or move the group to easily reposition its contents. You might also have noticed that the group layer is sent to blend mode pass through when you create a group. This means the group itself has no special blend properties of its own, so everything in the group will be passed down. 
There are a couple of caveats with groups though. First of all, they behave differently based on what's inside of them. If a group only contains adjustments or live filters and the blend mode of the group is passed through or normal, the adjustments or the filters will all propagate down, meaning the adjustments or the filter effects would be applied as if the group did not exist. To demonstrate this, let me add an HSL shift adjustment and lower the saturation, so we get this silver effect. On top of it, I will add a recolor adjustment to make it yellow again. And finally, let's also add a live filter, for example, a noise filter with a high intensity value so we can clearly see the effect. I can now select and group them. As you see, everything stays the same. Notice also the icon of the group. It shows a folder with the adjustments icon. So we know that this group only contains adjustments. Keep also in mind that layers are blended in in a group from the bottom to the top. So first the HSL adjustment is applied, followed by the recolor and finally the add noise filter. If I would move the HSL on top of the recolor, the image will become black and white again as the HSL is now applied after the recolor adjustment. Ok, let me undo that. Things get complicated if the group has a content layer, like a pixel or fill layer. The adjustments and the live filters in the group will now be clipped to the content of the group. To show you what I mean, I'm going to temporarily disable the noise filter and add a pixel layer. You notice, when I add the pixel layer, the effect of the recolor and the HSL adjustment is gone. In some cases, the changes will not be shown immediately. This might be a bug, but turning the group on and off will fix that. I will now paint with red on the lips and set its blend mode to multiply, so we get this nice red lips. Take a notice on the icon of the group. It has changed from a folder with an adjustment icon to an icon showing the pixel layer content, indicating that the adjustments in the group now will be applied to the content of the group. The adjustments in the group are currently not applied as they are lower in the layer stack. If I move the pixel layer below the adjustments, you will see that the adjustments are now applied to the pixel layer. Here is a second caveat, which is that the pass-through blend mode is not really a pass-through as some of you would expect. In Affinity, if a group with a content layer has the blend mode set to pass-through, it will use the blend mode of the lowest content layer to blend in. This might feel unnatural if you're new to Affinity and is definitely something to keep in mind. Let me demonstrate what I mean by ungrouping this layer. As you see, the end result looks different and this is because the adjustments are not clipped to the pixel layer anymore. Now, if I would group them again, you would expect that with pass-through blend mode nothing would change. But, as mentioned, this is not the case. Affinity uses the blend mode of the lowest content layer, in this case the pixel layer, for the group when the blend mode of the group is set to pass through. To get a true pass through, you can add a fill layer with black and set its blend mode to subtract. If we put this layer as the lowest layer in the group, we get the pass through we are looking for. By the way, this works because the black color has no effect in the subtract blend mode. And as this is the last layer in the group, all the layers in the group above this will get applied to the layers below now. While on the subject of blend modes, groups can also use regular blend modes. If the group has a blend mode set, it will overrule the blend mode of the last content layer. So, in this case, if I put the blend mode to normal, we get a black image. This is because of the fill layer we added. The black fill layer itself was set to subtract, however, now because the blend mode of the group is set to normal, it will blend in with the normal blend mode. I hope this makes sense. 
If I remove the black fill layer, we get this painted area on the lips coming from the pixel layer. The pixel layer was set to multiply, but this is ignored as the group has its own blend mode. Ok, let's set the blend mode of the group back to pass through. To make things even more confusing, here is the next caveat. Some live filters are not clipped to the content of the group. Let me show you what I mean. If I turn on the noise filter, you see that the noise is applied to the lips, but also for all the layers below. Another example is the Voronoi filter. Somehow these two filters think that they should be applied to the whole canvas. No idea whether this is a bug or not. But this is definitely something to keep in mind when using these two filters in a group. Before leaving you, I also want to let you know that you can nest groups as much as you want. As you see, I can press the command G to keep grouping and we get this super super nested group. In this video I have not touched the subject of child layers and clipping layers, but in the next video we will have a look at them. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Stay tuned for part 2, keep safe and keep being creative.